Hey guys, today we have a pretty cool video. I'm going to talk a little bit about what it's like to create your first course and some tips and tricks. I know a lot of you, much like myself, are you know looking for ways to maybe grow your portfolio, grow your notoriety, um, you know, share some of the knowledge that you have, and you don't necessarily want to go about creating a YouTube channel or a blog, and maybe you want to do these sort of one-off courses on Udemy. And we're going to talk a little bit about my process creating a Udemy course, as well as share some opportunities for those of you who are interested on some things that we could partner up with partner up on course related because I've, I've had a few inquiries and I'm doing it with a few other people but I figure I'd open it up to um, a couple of people who might be open uh, on the platform and we can connect and maybe make a few bucks and create some cool courses in the process so let's go ahead and dive into it I'd like to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp if you're interested in checking out a boot camp where they include housing with the tuition so you can get up and go, might I recommend Dev Mountain. They have multiple locations. Not only that, they have programs in QA, full stack web development, UI, UX, and iOS development. Check them out for more information at devmountain.com. So I have three courses currently and I'm working on another one and you can see I, I have about 358 reviews and about 2200 students and um, you know it's not I wouldn't say I'm a huge creator on, on Udemy by any means but I, I have put out some content and I have made some tweaks and you know I don't give away my courses for free I think I've maybe given away like 25 uh, court 25 or 50 um, students in, in the past because I you know I put a lot of time effort and energy and I want to you know this is a premium thing and I give out content on YouTube but I, I am somewhat experienced with using Udemy as a platform and creating content um, but the first thing I want to sort of say when you're thinking about making a course is really define what topic you are it is that you want to create and, and make it very narrow the thing that I, I suffered with is I want to in a lot of things that I do go very large just go big 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 and especially for your first course going small and getting something out the door to learn from it I think is the correct way of going about it and from what I can tell from working with LinkedIn learning um, that's what they're sort of doing with me because they they've learned that in their own process so I'm, I'm doing a very short very small sort of very niche course that covers some good stuff in, in a very quick amount of time but it's very specific right and I'll give you an example like the course I'm probably going to be building with them is on object-oriented programming, specifically in TypeScript. We're not going to cover all of TypeScript. We're, we're going to cover a very small subset of it that will dive deeper into some of these items rather than trying to cover all of TypeScript, right? Um, so that'd be the first thing. The second thing is understand what type of course you want to make and, and how your own feel for it is going to be. So the way I like to build courses nowadays, and this is something that I've learned, is I like a lot of mini projects rather than one big project so um, although it says I have three courses I did have a angular course two of them that were project based that got deprecated very quickly because angular as a framework updates relatively I think it's every six months there's a new uh, version update of angular which is great because the technology is progressing but it makes it very hard when your code example expands through the entire project and then you have to update it and maintain it and I've, I've taken those down because it's so hard and I'm, I'm coming back to it nowadays and what I've sort of tried to do now is create create mini projects so uh, I started this when I started doing the hundred algorithms challenge where we were essentially creating a hundred algorithms solving them in TypeScript and so on and so forth and now we're doing the 100 front end interview question challenge where it's 100 front end interview questions and we're going over it and the idea here being that we're going to if one part of it blows up that's fine it's not going to cascade through the course and then we can have a way of updating it so that's sort of the one one lesson that I've learned now everyone's going to have a different take on it and if you're a full-time creator on Udemy for instance then yeah you're not too worried about it because you'll just update it because that's your full-time job for me it's sort of a, a part-time hobby for the for the time being and as you get going I think that's the route you should take and you can sort of expand out down the road <laughs> now um, the next thing I would recommend is don't try and necessarily emulate anybody else and this goes for like YouTube as well as I think a lot of people look at 
what other people are doing. It's okay to, to sort of pick and, and choose and be like, oh, cool, I like this idea. I like that idea. That's something I can do. But they oftentimes aren't true to themselves about the, – I, I guess what I'm trying to say is so, I personally like it when people have their own personality in the course. At the end of the day, there's a lot of people putting out the same content on YouTube, on Udemy, on these various platforms that – if you're just going to be like everybody else and you're not going to be true to yourself, it's going to show through the video. It's going to show through the lesson. So it's okay to have some personality. It's okay to share yourself and who you actually are. And I would encourage you to do so. And I think that will not only will that help you in the long run, because what's going to happen is you you know, you can't fake being somebody else. 100% of the time and it's not healthy uh, and it shows and what will happen is that people who do like you and they do like your teaching style they do like your content is that they're going to stay and they're going to continue to enjoy uh, your content they're going to continue to come back for videos that maybe weren't even what they signed up for but now now they know you now they like you and you're more likely to have those sort of that repeat business right the, um, at the end of the day not to like turn it to money or anything like that but it a business Every business that is successful long term, it's about that repeat customer. It's not about the one off sort of items. And as they get to know you, as they get to feel you out, that's something that I think um, you know, you can really sort of you can you can get that when they when people find out that they like you for you and your content and your teaching style. Um, you know, and the the last thing before we talk about some of some of the items that that maybe we can partner up on is that don't take a negative mindset. A lot, of, a lot of people are like, well, this already exists. That already exists. This already exists. You can put a spin on it, anything, right? <laughs> um, were there algorithm courses on Udemy before I put them? Of course there was. <laughs> but did anyone have 100 of them? No, that was my spin. That was what I wanted to do. Were there you know, front-end interview question courses on Udemy? Of course. But you know, maybe I, I tackled it in a different way and I, I did it my own way. You doesn't mean that you can't improve upon what's already there. Are there going to be challenges? Absolutely. But you could always take the negative mindset. And I, I've seen this happen again and again with people who are um, pessimists, which it's okay to be a realist. I, I consider myself a realist. So there are some things that I'm like, oh, that's probably a bad idea, but let's give it a shot <laughs> sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, no, that's just a bad idea. Let's not do it. Um, and then there's people who are just straight up pessimists where anything that's not guaranteed in life, they're not going to do, right? Oh, I'm going to start a YouTube channel? No, no, no. You are so much competition. Never going to do that. Oh, I'm going to put course on your Udemy or Skillshare or any? No, no, no. Never going to do that. Um, are these things time intensive? Absolutely. Should you take chances in life, especially early on? Like now, early on, like right now for me, this is the time to take chances. I, I don't have any kids yet. I, I don't have family obligations. I'm on the other side of the country, so I'm sort of cut off from everybody, and I can do anything I want, and I have the time to do it now. And earlier on in your life, is the better. it's better to get started today than tomorrow. Because things are going to happen. You're going to you're gonna go old. You're going to have family. You're going to, um, you know, have children. You're going to have to take care of your parents. Whatever it is, you might get laid off down the road. It's, it's better to get started today and put that time in. Because time, as you grow older, is more valuable than, than anything else. And you're not going to have access to as much of it. So um, that's sort of my tips when getting started. And really, at the end of the day, sum it up, just get started. Be true to yourself. Create a syllabus of what you want to do, uh, top to bottom, in the order. I do very high level. Some people like to get very detailed, not how I roll. I like, all right, these are the hundred videos I'm gonna film. Literally give like a title, and I'm sort of it's in the you know organized chaos as, as uh, Brad calls it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that would be it. So that's my tips for sort of creating your first course and getting going and seeing what it's like, and of course participate in courses and see what other people are doing, so you have an idea what people like. Um, okay, so the other part of this video, if you're interested, I am, I've, I've had a couple emails come to my way. say, hey, man, I, I like your courses. Do you care if I do a spinoff course, this or that? And it started this conversation where um, people want to do different language versions of the courses I have, which you're all welcome to. But what, I, what I'm going to be doing moving forward is uh, take my 100 algorithms challenge course, for instance, that's in TypeScript. I have, I'm partnering up with somebody who's doing it in C sharp and I'm partnering up with somebody who's doing it in PHP and types of things like that, where 
Um, we're going to be doing multiple languages of my courses and I'll be releasing them on my platform and we'll be splitting it up and I'm going to help them make it and help uh, help them record. Obviously, I don't do C Sharp or PHP professionally. I've done a little bit professionally, but I, I wouldn't say like I'm going to sit down and redo the course. But we're going to partner up and there's a split and all that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in uh, doing a spinoff of one of my courses and you want to create some content, but you're like, I don't want to manage it. I just want to get a check in the mail every month after I make it. That's something that we can work out. And, um, you know, I can sort of promote it on, on uh, various platforms and on here. And so, um, you know, because a lot of people, they have taken this course and like, damn, man, I wish this was in Java because uh, I'm not a, a JavaScript guy. And there's opportunities like that. And the current course that I'm working on right now, the 100 Angular Challenge, which is 100 Angular component services, directives, and pipes. I'm looking for someone to do it in React and I'm looking for someone to do it in Vue. And so if you're interested, I'll include my uh, my LinkedIn <laughs> in the description below and I'll include my uh, I'll just include my LinkedIn and you can add me on LinkedIn and we can talk about it and figure it out. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much it. I, I encourage you guys to always look for interesting ways to grow your skills, grow your portfolio, share your knowledge, give back to the community in some way. And if you can turn a buck, that's always good, too. It helps keep you motivated and helps uh, pays the bills so you can do things like, um, you know, pay your mortgage off early and help your family out and stuff like that. Um, but uh, anyhow, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. And if you're interested in any of my current courses, there are links in the description below, uh, which you can get for uh, a highly discounted rate. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, guys, don't forget to hit that notification bell or smash that like button while you're at it. And if you're interested, I just released my latest course, the 100 Front End Technical Question Challenge, which is there to help you pass those front end technical interviews. There's over 100 questions. You can get it for just $9.99. The link is in the description below or use coupon code CODINGGOD.